last session. Uh, I think you have a very packed agenda. How many of you are coming from uh, telecom background? Not many. So whatever I am going to cover here is not only limited to the telecom. Right? So you are coming from different uh, verticals. So we will make sure the learning is there, whatever we are seeing, how we can empower you from a limitless connectivity uh, and how you can make the change to improve both from the customer side and enterprise. Sure. So what we will do in the next 30, 35 minutes, we can make the session interactive. So anyway, we don't have too many uh, uh, people as well, uh, people join. So if you have any question for me, you can raise hand as well. We'll keep some Python minutes uh, towards the end. But at the end, when you are spending a very first talk on this, uh, I wish everybody have some takeaway, either from a technology, futuristic technology point or how we are doing it. Right? So how I plan the session is, uh, the need for limitless connectivity. So because I am representing Ericsson, which is a 5G or a telecom company, we want to maybe uh, leverage or empower the technology on how it can impact our day-to-day -day life. Just to start with, so can you imagine a day without a smartphone, right? So it's becoming part of our body. Right? So right from uh, alarm or maybe taking a ride or just think of it in a, a the moment you woke up and by the time you are here, how many times you use it, right? So then what more, right? This is already part of it and we are seeing it, but I am talking about the future which is beyond the mobile aspect, where the connectivity, the moment connectivity means for us only the mobile or maybe the fiber, these things will come into mind, but I want, I am going to explore few more opportunities when it comes to the 5G or Internet of Things, AI, extended reality, there are a lot of buzzwords, right? So how we can connect together to improve our own lives and sustainable future. That's what I'm going to cover in the beginning. Then to do that, being in a technology conference, it won't be complete without saying, okay, this is the future and this is what the impact we can make it, but how we can be part of in this journey, right? That's what the second part I will try to cover with few examples uh, in terms of education, in terms of uh, factories, uh, in terms of uh, entertainment. There might be different industries you are representing. There will be some takeaway for each of you. Then on the second part of the story, so how AIML is playing role in this limitless connectivity, I'll take some example. So maybe we'll start with the 10,000 or 30,000 feet, what we talk about, how the future looks like, but what we are doing on the ground today to reach that future. Right? So those are the two parts I'm trying to cover. Feel free to interrupt at any time. So we'll go into the session right away. So this is an introductory slide where uh, some of you may not know that we have a house uh, for more than 250, uh, close to 300 data scientists and engineers in Ericsson, out of which more than 100 people are uh, uh, in the same uh, outer ring road uh, at your campus. We do have a good presence in Sweden and uh, uh, North America as well. So what we do as a horizontal, right? So right now AI is part of every organization. AI, maybe they have called it as analytics or AI different terminology of the teams, but it is part of, integral part of every uh, organization. So as a horizontal, what we do is these three things. How do you really automate a lot of activities? Right now, how many of you are already using 5G in your mobile phone? It's already there in Bangalore and a couple of you are already uh, using it. Right? It just launched in India, I think in the IMC conference in October uh, from uh, our Prime Minister and most of the cities and type of cities are already covered. Right? So that's one part of the 5G. But what we are going to talk now, uh, uh, there is something like a private 5G. Within the factory itself, we can think of a network. So we talk about Wi-Fi, we talk about fiber, we talk about different technologies, right? Maybe in future it may converge everywhere. So when we talk about the automation, we still have a lot of 5G um, networks uh, still, uh, and uh, even 4G, not many 3G and 2G around the world. So when we talk about automation, we solve interesting problems, not just only on 4G, and even 5G as well. Right? I'll talk about a couple of use cases down the line. And how do you evolve the business with new use cases? Whenever AI, uh, some of you, how many of you are working in AI? Different domains maybe. A couple of you already? Yeah, good. So how I see the problems when I'm uh, solving hundreds of use cases in the last 10, 15 years, some of the problems are the old problem, maybe solving with machine learning or maybe the deep learning and all in it, new outcome. Some of the opportunities are coming which were not there previously, maybe with the advent of Internet of Things or the drones, right? So there are two types of problems which we will discuss uh, in the, down the line. 
and at the end how do you empower or maybe how do you help us to grow the business at the end dollar matters for us right so those are the three things we do as part of layer coming to the main part of the story what are the technologies when i say enter into the world of uh, limitless connectivity i want to immerse you into the different technological advancements which we can see in the next 10 years so the first one itself is the limitless connectivity there i was talking about whatever you see the towers these are already taken uh, granted we assume that yes the connectivity is there and then now 5g maybe 6g is uh, still on the way right another 4 5 years and 6g will come again but the point is when it comes to the limitless connectivity is not just only the humans to human interaction so there are a lot of machine to machine interaction will happen how many of you will believe that is already the roots are already there when we speak in 2022 Machine to human, human to machine, or machine to machine communication. Is it still science fiction, or it is there already? Right. What example comes to your mind? Maybe autonomous car to some extent, right? So we talk about a lot of M to M communication or Internet of Things. All that are covered by this limit test current. Right. So there are needs which are to which we are talking about. Uh, take example of healthcare, or we are just coming out of COVID mania. I used to be regular to these kind of events, maybe. Pre COVID, but post COVID, it took some time for us to come back and see each other uh, in this kind of mode. Otherwise, we have to wait to uh, have online webinars and all that. Right. So when we talk about the limitless connectivity there, just think of it: the digitization in healthcare kind of thing, right? Across the country, across the country, or we can say across the world. Within few months of COVID. Most of the famous doctors, whether in Bangalore or in UK or in US, are available online. So, otherwise, it could have taken a decade for the people to really have the telemedicine kind of thing. So, I am talking about the positive side of it, right? So, uh, there are a lot of things which uh, we can learn from the COVID-19 scenario. But the point of digitalization, or maybe people thinking that yes, it can work that way, or how many people are going five days a week to the office? Not many. It changes the future of workplace for us, right? If you are meeting, uh, meeting based on organization policy once in a week or once in a month, it depends on the uh, need. But otherwise, we've proven uh, in the last few years that we can work remote and still uh, not drop a ball. Yeah. So, to, how it is really possible? There are a lot of security issues, and there are companies which won't allow the laptop or other uh, other asset to go outside of your organization. But how they survive during the COVID? Because they have good security policies at the end. At the end, they have connectivity. Right, that's where the connecting story for uh, uh, all these things to happen. Then, when it comes to the second pillar, that is trustworthy systems. That's the uh, once we have the connectivity, unless we prove whether it is a mission critical or business business critical, any organization can take the risk just to give a comfort. Okay, you can work from home. No organization, right? Maybe if you see your own organization, the important uh, teams who are coming back to office are the these critical teams. Right, where they want maybe the data privacy related issues or the IT related uh, activities, they cannot be doing completely remote. Right, so to establish that, we need a trustworthy system. It's not just only the network; the entire system needs to be trustworthy. Even because some of you are coming from AI, have you heard the term trusted AI or responsible AI? Right, we are adding a lot of acronyms to for AI. Right, in the last ten years, we have seen tremendous growth in AI. Now, what is going to be the future? Is some of them we will cover today in this talk, but uh, something like AI, where we are talking about connectivity, and it's not just only the cloud where that AI processing is happening. So, when the moment we say uh, AI, that means we are trying to distribute the loads. Naturally, we need to establish the trust. Then only they will be able to uh, pass on the loads to run on the edge device, right? Are the other uh, technologies something like a trusted AI or responsible AI, ethical AI? Right? And ethical AI means all that we are we are in a uh, tech women conference, so this should not be any bias. Who will ensure that there is no bi inherent bias in the models what we build? Right. So this, there are all of ethical aspects. If you see from my side, the technology is advancing so much. Maybe the chat GPT, which is the buzzword in the last uh, few months. Now maybe yesterday the people were talking about GPT-4. And we are going to change, or is going to impact even the school going kid, right? So uh, not only the technologies, that's a different topic though. But the point I'm bringing there is we are taking a lot of advances in the technology, and what is the need of the hour there is how we ensure that the systems are trustworthy, and we are learning the way we want to learn 
Otherwise, a lot of governance or ethical issues will come. Maybe technologically we will be advanced, but they may be put in breaks. Okay, is it violating privacy or it is not uh, secure? It's not good for the uh, humanity or our society. Okay, those are the things which we need to address as well. The third pillar is cognitive network. The down cognitive is, as of now we are in an era where we are taking the AI, artificial intelligence, as maybe AI version 2 people call it as. It's still not generalized AI, right? It's not competing with human yet, but we are trying to make the system self-learning or self-healing kind of thing. From a networking point of it, we are trying to make the networks as zero patch. That means if the, if the network issue happens, it should automatically identify and correct it and self-heal it, maybe record it for the logging purpose, otherwise there is no human intervention at all. In that end, right? So the same example you can take from any other domain which you are coming up. The self-learning and self-healing is the thing which we are talking from a cognitive perspective. The last fabric is uh, related to the compute, network compute fabric. The moment I say, yes, it is going to be limitless connectivity reaching to your mobile as well, can you think of running a deep learning model on your mobile? Yes, no. Some of you are saying no, but still, as we speak in 2020, you can run it, right? It's more like if I recollect my first uh, laptop maybe 20 years ago, your mobile in your pocket is much more powerful than the uh, laptop or maybe the desktop, right? So you can still think of running a deep learning model on your edge device, on your mobile itself. So when you have the compute power like that, how do you ensure, similarly from a network point of it, you see a lot of towers outside which are providing the 4G, 5G connectivity. Can we run something at that place instead of pushing every data point to the cloud? Right? We want to have a distributed uh, computing kind of a thing. That's where the network compute can. These all four different technologies will help us to have that limitless connectivity and a lot of possibilities to solve the problems across different domains. To do that, there are drivers for this. Right? So if you if you go the first one, the digitized programmable world, I'll do one month, um, uh, maybe we'll spend one one minute each, uh, each, that will be the takeaway, so that you can think of, in your own domain, you're not working directly in the telecom, right? But there are a lot of uh, domains which you are working on which can be influenced by these advancements. For instance, digitized uh, programmable world, we talk about uh, digital twins. Have you heard the name anytime? Digital twin. It's nothing but you have a replica of your physical system at your place. Why should we spend all the energy and the time and effort to do that, right? A lot of these simulations which you do the experimentation and all, if you do it in digital twin, it will save a lot of uh, time for the rollout point of Second thing is you can control the sensing actuation kind of a thing. You can replicate the scenarios, create a lot of scenarios, okay? That's where the digital twin come into picture. To give an example, Maybe in the COVID-19 scenario, how much time it took for us to get a vaccine on the ground to reach us? Maybe a couple of months? Usually the cycle, you know how much time it takes to get a vaccine approved for even for emergency usage a couple of years ago? Typically five, six years life cycle because you need to take a lot of uh, precautions and then take the different scenarios, test it, efficacy, all that, right? But within few months, we are able to uh, get the approval even for emergency use. There are a lot of AI played the role there as well, right? A lot of scenarios they are trying to uh, analyze and uh, what will be the side effects of it. Just producing the drug is one part of it, right? But, uh, making it to the different scenarios and doing it, use the technology to the extent possible, then only it, it reaches that stage. And maybe we are slowly coming out of that. Okay? The second thing is connected intelligent machines. The best example is uh, the, the autonomous car. Okay, what are the different technologies which you see in your uh, uh, world, whether it's the computer vision or you are talking about sensors or taking the connectivity into the place or taking the decision at a GI perspective, you are making the decision, right? So if you take one wrong decision, some connectivity gap is there of few seconds, instead of break, uh, applying your brake, you can apply an accelerator, it costs a life, right? So it's very important, especially in terms of uh, connected intelligent machines, is not just only humans talking to machines, which is already we are seeing now with the 4G, 5G, or even the, from the 2G onwards, but how the machines are interacting with each other and backed up by this connectivity and how they are making the decisions which are going to be part of our day to day life. Next one is Internet of Senses. It's interesting. You might have heard of Internet of Things, right? 
internet of senses in the sense you know all the five senses what we have as of now i think whatever we are speaking and uh, seeing that you are seeing already with the technology and we are talking about the next level even the haptic kind of a thing or a smell kind of a thing can we go in that level internet of senses with all the other uh, supporting technologies like extended reality augmented reality is not very far from us right in this decade you can see that so there you can see as if the other person is next to us right you can feel it right which is not there in this uh, uh, world as of now which the connectivity plays again the critical role along with the other technologies the last driver is sustainable we can talk a lot of these technological developments but still we do have our responsibility to keep the sustainability or the carbon footprint within the day, within the limits and, and uh, i have some other slides on that but the driver for us is whatever we are doing it should be done in a energy optimized way okay. so i'll just double click on some of those things and give examples so that you can connect to what i'm speaking here the first one is mobile networks of the future it looks like maybe the lot of acronyms here as you see it should be dynamic it should be trustworthy it should be intelligent right but all this can happen with the supporting technologies and you and me are going to play a lot of role being the technologies to make that network trustworthy or to make the network resilient or highly intelligent or self healed right so we'll take three four different examples uh, before we going into the technological aspects of it so i uh, one what are the possibilities because of this limited standard one is unlimited learning from anywhere the first point there you must see learning point of it i think you are already feeling that now right if you want to learn let's say the ai technology or something like deep learning or some advanced reinforcement learning kind of thing your phone is good enough for you to learn it anywhere in the world right the courses are available or the knowledge is available maybe some personalization is required at the end of the world otherwise you are bombarded with too much knowledge that is one side of the story where the connectivity is empowering you There is the second one uh, where we have worked on some of the examples as well. There is a digital divide. Even though there are billion children going to school as we speak now, but there are almost like 260 million uh, students who are not going to school. So UNICEF, as most of you know, as an organization, we partnered with them. I was working in that project for past three years. We can probably say we are able to connect more than one million schools in last three years. We, maybe I have the map here, whatever you can see here, right? It's across the uh, across the world. so it is impacting the millions of uh, kids lives so that they are connected to the internet and their learning experience is there you know the impact of that once the country uh, has uh, students who are uh, learning this uh, <coughs> education thing definitely it can go have impact in the gdp level right so that's where the connected uh, uh, connectivity can play the role the second point in terms of entertainment right so one is on the education side where the need of the day but the second one is in entertainment where the boundaries between live and virtual is going to really blur maybe i am showing a football match but just think of it when you went for the ipl or maybe cricket uh, in the stadium you will go for an experience but you still feel that okay if you see in the <coughs> home with the friends you will feel much more inclusive the reason is you can see the shots very closer otherwise you are seeing you are uh, sitting in one corner of the stadium and you are not feeling the entire experience right but what we are talking about there maybe the technology of augmented and extended reality you can feel again you see the live experience at the same time whatever you want to see the uh, replay or the uh, the detailed analysis also is possible right so the same thing i have given only the picture of the same the same way in a concert right where the you may be in the last row but you are you are as if you want to feel it you are in the second or uh, first row can you feel that experience as well all these are coming from the entertainment uh, point of it where there is a extreme performance requirements some places you may feel that okay this is not like mission critical or rocket critical but from your entertainment point of it or gaming point of it right or any medicine take example of any medicine the same line we are talking about uh, taking the help of uh, some best surgeon in the world remotely guiding and take uh, and maybe the surgery is uh, happening in india maybe for cancer related one or maybe the critical uh, operations point of it there the limitless connectivity is again coming into picture to save lives right then if you go to the different business not the environment not the education actual business point of it you may be coming from different retail or manufacturing kind of a thing so if you see here uh, i'll take two examples 
smart factory. If you think of a factory kind of a thing, a lot of automation is already done. Right? A lot of robots are there in terms of manufacturing. Now what we are talking about is we have a smart factory to give an example of a 5G factory where we are maybe manufacturing the 5G uh, equipment with the smart factory. What is most special about smart factory is in, uh, inside also we don't have any wires. Entire communication is happening with the 5G in your 5G setup. So which helps us to write from the power saving in terms of uh, uh, operational cost we are able to reduce significantly. So going forward, maybe the simplified communication may happen, taking in a unified communication point of it. No fibers, no cables, right? Only the uh, this 5G or upcoming 6G can take place. The second example is connected vehicles. We talked about autonomous cars. Just think of it. If you have any vehicle as of now, if there is a new vehicle which you got it, and maybe you might have heard of a recall of a machine, uh, recall of some parts and all that. It costs millions of dollars for the organization. Just think of Teslas or maybe the, these autonomous uh, vehicles. Most of the time, those uh, recall or maybe the fixes can happen over the uh, cloud, right? I still remember five years ago, not very recently, before COVID itself, when I was uh, in US with my friend in a Tesla car, it was showing, I think, 300 miles per hour, uh, or maybe 300 miles is the mileage for a full charge. He got an update just like we get an update in a mobile, and it was increased to 350. And it's more like a patch update. Just think of the thing where we are grown up as a physical device or maybe a complex machine of a car. Now the new avatars or next generation are going to see that, okay, there may be a physical damage, puncture, this and all, those things are maybe need to be taken care of physically. But all the related digital world and everything, just like you are getting a patch update in your mobile or laptop, you are able to get for the machine as well. Right? So those are the things which we are talking from a redefining the business point of view. Uh, connectivity is playing a, a major role there and even the AGI. A lot of decisions you are able to take while the autonomous car is taking the control of it. The last one on the uh, sustainable feature point of it, as I mentioned, there are some numbers, okay, we need to get uh, carbon neutral so on so here at all. But once the technology is not taking care, okay, we may be coming with 5G, we may be coming with 6G, unless we are uh, building a system which is energy efficient, we can't achieve those goals, sustainable goals. Right? So we are going in that direction, especially using the technology right from the energy optimization at all layers. I'll talk about some of them uh, down the line. So we covered the ground maybe from 10,000 feet level, what the future looks like, where the connectivity plays the role, how we touches different verticals, different examples. Right? Let's talk about because there will be a tech conference, we can't just leave it at a level, okay, uh, future is looking bright, but what we can do to reach that, right? Some examples I'll try to talk about. So if you see this picture, what comes to your mind? Maybe some network layers, right? All of you are, may, may not be coming from telecom, but everybody who has done engineering, we might have seen different network layers, right? From physical layer to the application layer, or everybody is using a mobile and paying the bill at the end of the <coughs> month, right? So there's a lot of things happening at a digital BSS, OSS, etc. That means billing, charging, all that uh, kind of thing. Then we do have a lot of uh, management layer, the green things, what you are talking about. The major aspect, the work, the main takeaway from um, uh, showing this kind of a picture is, is not just only at one box corner of it, AI is sitting. It is touching everywhere, every layer, right? What kind of examples I can give in each layer? I'll talk in the next slides. But the point is, we are <coughs> talking about AI playing the role at every layer, right from the uh, billing charging till the core network. Our core part of our core business is in the radio access network, the physical layer. Right from there till the application layer, we do have a role of uh, AI. Let me justify that with different use cases. I may not be able to talk each and everything in detail, but I want to give you a perspective. Some of them can be worked on across the domains as well, not just only limited to telecom, right? So one example is maybe right from a network planning and operations point of it. Uh, the good example can be how do you enhance your customer experience, how you do the ticket handling and resolution, for instance, right? That is across the board. We don't require to talk about only the telecom. Before joining Ericsson, I worked in uh, healthcare, I worked in different uh, uh, verticals. So I can see a lot of synergy. And the beauty of this is whatever I'm going to talk some solutions in the next 10-15 minutes, the same models we inherited from other domains, 
the same way whatever we are talking about you can inherit, uh, especially that's the beauty of deep learning, uh, especially when we talk about computer vision or uh, natural language processing. Right? Only thing is, we need to see what is the power of it when it comes to solving the interesting problems, what you are facing. Similarly, edge devices, we have a lot of connectivity and security issues. One thing is, we are going to solve interesting problems at different levels. At the same time, there are other aspects of security to come into the picture. Don't think that is the last thing which you need to do it, right? From the beginning, you need to talk about. I'll give one example, especially in the security and uh, data privacy aspects. So we, last year we started with a, pro a project from Europe, uh, from one of the leading operators. Actually, CEO level, they have an agreement within three months, we want to show some powerful use case for it. Right? So when they agreed at a CEO level, the thing should move faster, right? The technological challenges point of it, it should be definitely doable within three months. But the same project took us almost like 12 months because we are talking about data privacy issues and that took uh, how much of data they can uh, pass it to me. Uh, governing to their own uh, geographical constraints point of it, right? Once you have it, okay, how do you, you create the firewall kind of a thing? Where do you really store it? How do you analyze it? There are n number of things which we need to iron out, those things, right? Why those things are not there earlier? Because once it is in research, we do a small POC, these things may not come into picture. Now, once you want to roll out and real deployment point of it, when you are talking about all these things come into picture, right? So then core network and data centers point of it, we do have a lot of resource optimization point of it. Sometimes the standard statistics, optimization, whatever you learn, right, machine learning kind of a thing, it will be useful. Maybe coming under the heading of AI, but there are a lot of interesting problems to solve even from optimization. Then energy efficiency and uh, transport optimization, there are optimization at different levels, right, from radio or core or transport point of view. Let me give you some more uh, solid examples so that uh, you can see, okay, it's not just only in telecom, you can solve it in your own domain as well. For instance, machine learning point of it, before I introduce the last topic of machine reasoning, it is doing a good job. Uh, machine reasoning, uh, machine learning, I'm including even the deep learning, because whatever we are deploying, some methods are with the advanced machine learning, some of them are with the deep learning. So it may be simple system monitoring like anomaly detection and all, but it may look like very simple. Okay, I'm, I'm aware of this algorithm, but it took a couple of months for us to really deploy it and then do, do a multivariate kind of analysis and finally talk about that, right? Just think of it is not just only the knowing the particular algorithm, think of end-to-end -end perspective, then only the real value of deployment will reach the customers. That's the key takeaway. Similarly, when you talk about the managed services, okay, how do you talk about the churn prediction? The customers are leaving, how do you uh, make sure or how do you predict early? It's some of the interesting problems. That may be applicable in every industry. The last one on the intelligent networks part, you talk about self-healing. As I mentioned to you in the networks, if it observes that, so let me talk about the scale of data we talk. Even if you take a Bangalore as an example, we do have maybe one lakh kind of uh, different towers, cells, which is giving us every 15 minutes GBs of data. You can think of how much of data an operator is holding, right? So terabytes of data at the end of the day, and how do you analyze and how do you predict up front, there is some issue going to happen, and can you auto correct it, reconfigure it, right, based on the knowledge management what we have, that's where the machine raising it come into picture, because we still have human in loop, right, it's not like the system is completely automated in uh, handling all the situations. So that's where I will talk about the last one, but before that, to give you a glimpse of uh, two, three scenarios, we have done an incident management automatically, and you can see the power of it. You don't require to go into the details of it, what the category at all, but I want to emphasize the data reduction. It used to have thousands of alarms. From there, we are able to reduce to 96, let's say close to 100 prioritized uh, incidents. So some of those things, what we talked about, maybe interesting problems, okay. Earlier, I might have used regular statistics. Now I'm using advanced, uh, uh, let's say the machine learning or deep learning. But I, I told you in the beginning of the thing, some use cases are going to come with the advances in the technologies. So for instance, just think of the towers what we are seeing outside, right? They are in the tens of meters away from the ground and the big towers what you see. Have you ever wondered how do they really maintain it? Somebody needs to climb and fix it, right? So we are talking about a visual intelligence, a couple of use cases, maybe around 25 to 30 different use cases implemented already in a couple of countries. We are taking the help of a drone, right? 
So to take the videos of these uh, uh, towers, not all the towers, let's say one lakh towers in Bangalore need not be. But wherever we see there are issues or maybe there are real newly deployed or they are seeing a lot of complaints in those cases. To prioritize those, we are taking the drone images and we are using the visual intelligence there, which was never thought a couple of years ago. Right? These are new way of uh, doing the things. And the maintenance is much more simple now. So everything is automated and now we know out of those one lakh, um, let's say the cells around Bangalore, which are problematic and everything is done by the computer vision. What are the problems for instance? What you see the picture? Too much of cable bending or some kind of exposure part. You may see that it's like very small problems, but these are going to impact your call quality, right? Once the system setup was done, it may be too much bending or maybe they are, they are exposed to a lot of weather conditions, right? Whether it's rain, uh, sun or uh, any of those uh, dust. So when you talk about these, we have some standards to meet. 99% of uh, quality should be there or uh, at 20 point of it, all that, right? So we have a lot of these interesting use cases which we never thought before we can do it, but with the advances of computer vision, with the drones which are coming in reality, we are able to take those use cases and then prioritize what cells needs really in somebody needs to climb and fix it. I am not talking at this stage some robot is going and fixing it, but that's maybe on the way. But then we don't require a human to plan that stuff. That's the use case we are talking Then the last five minutes, what we can use uh, is on the machine reasoning part. Have you heard the name machine reasoning anytime? It's not me. Machine learning, I'm sure you have heard, right? Yeah. So machine <coughs> reasoning may be a different terminology uh, which we are using. It's part of AI. So all of you know machine learning and deep learning are a subset of AI. There are a lot of other things, especially on the knowledge management part of it, right? Which is called machine reasoning, which is going to the future, right? I'm not saying that machine reasoning is going to replace machine learning. Both of them are going to coexist. I'll give one example and then uh, uh, take up your questions as well. Wherever we see, right now, we are talking about thousands of data scientists in Bangalore solving interesting problems. But can they solve without a domain knowledge? Not really. When we are building the team, I might have recruited 50, 60 people in the last two, three uh, years. If I ask somebody needs to come with a telecom domain expertise plus the machine learning or AI, I may not get too many people. The same thing applicable for other industries as well. But down the line, two years, three years down the line, we may get it because people are getting experience in each domain. So the challenge is we need the domain specialists. At the same time, we need the expertise of this uh, data science or data engineering part of it. The domain expertise, whatever they have the knowledge, we can't translate everything to a uh, machine learning part of it. Right? There's a lot of ontologies you may need to build it. And that's called a symbolic knowledge. Right? So how do you give an example of it? Right? Take example of some OSS, VSS kind of a system that means building or charging or any of those. What are the usual examples of ML algorithms? Some prediction kind of a thing or some kind of a regression kind of a thing or a classification. That's standard. Right? But on top of it to make a decision there, I have a regressor value. Maybe I need to convert it into classification. You need to come up with a threshold. Every time it's not like a 0.5 above is 1 and 0.5 below is 0. A lot of domain knowledge is required. So that's where the machine reasoning is coming into picture. Wherever the domain expert knowledge, there is symbolic knowledge people call it as, and put it into the knowledge base, it should help with the decision making. That's what we are referring to. Take example of that uh, business intent. If I say problem, business problem, I may say that, okay, improve the network performance. It's not a very well-defined problem, right? From a business side, I'm clear. But is it a well-defined machine learning kind of a problem? How do you do it? I may need to bifurcate further. Okay, you need to improve so-and-so parameter or so-and-so KPI, key performance indicator. So what we are talking in this system when we are leveraging machine reasoning and learning is the business intent is very clear. You improve the network performance. Let it bifurcate the problem into the lower level uh, business uh, intent point of it, okay, you improve this particular parameter by 10% or decrease this parameter by 5%, then overall your objective is met. So whatever is that domain knowledge kind of a thing, if you are uh, empowering that with the machine reasoning, this itself can do it. Okay? That's what the example we are referring to when we are lever leveraging both machine learning and machine reasoning. The last point of it, where we can really use it, right? there are different use cases across the domain, not just only telecom. So that's what I want to leave you with. Whatever we have seen so far, uh, with, and maybe let me complete it, then I will summarize. So both in the products point of it, operations point of it we can use, and industry 4.0 we can use, 
And all of these advances, even though we are representing mostly AI and connectivity in this one, without the other uh, surrounding um, advancements in the cloud or augmented reality or Internet of Things, this won't be really possible. Right? So finally, what we are talking about is we want to realize the intent-based autonomous systems. I took an example of uh, networking, but the same thing you can talk about healthcare, you can talk about retail system. How we are making it more powerful is what we are trying to talk in the last 30 minutes. To summarize, what we have uh, talked about is we have, I'm trying to immerse you in the world of limitless connectivity in the first few minutes. What are the real advantages or the real power of uh, those uh, limitless connectivity, either it is in education, we can talk about in the entertainment or even in the factories or autonomous cars, wide examples we are able to cover. And after that, I want to immerse you in terms of what are the things we are doing on the ground today to leverage that. Right? The future is bright and we talk about a lot of these interesting use cases and how different problems we can solve with AIML and left you with uh, thinking in terms of how machine reasoning can help you to solve your own domain problems. Okay. I have a lot of these uh, references which are open, the deck is also shared, uh, uh, your motor information is available. Yeah. I am uh, open for questions. <laughs>